News Talk 98.9, the roar of Memphis. Tool Talk Radio with Joe and Alan. Welcome to Tool Talk Radio, coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. I'm Joe Thorson with Thor's Hammer, Carpentry and Wood Turning. I'm Alan Gilbreth, darkhookmedia.com. And I'm Maximilian Lamenting that we were preempted last week and didn't get to properly celebrate World Toilet Day. Oh my gosh, how did we miss this anniversary, Alan? What I mean, I know Tiger football is high crime, thing, but wow, All right, you two missed it. I dodged it. What are you talking about? <laughs> Alan unwittingly celebrated it about five oh. times last week. So. Oh my gosh! Of uh, you know, I've installed enough of them in the last two weeks. I was there. World Toilet Day. What a landmark occasion, Max. So, what date? Do you remember the date offhand? Because uh, it was November nineteenth. Okay. Wow. I, I'd love to know who designates World Toilet Day. So, but. Uh, you know, I mean, oddly, as much as we like to pick on that particular home device, yeah, it is fairly responsible for modern civilization. Well, it's funny you say that because uh, Max was uh, asking me something before the show. I think you want to uh, not take a deep dive, uh, no. but you want to you want to maybe follow up a little bit on it. You have a follow up report uh, from that, so correct the mundo. Okay, all right. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. So, if you've got a way in. <laughs> Uh, tread lightly, folks. But if you'd like to weigh in on World Toilet Day or the uh, you know post World Toilet mm. Day, uh, you can call or text us at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline at 901-683-0989. We also invite you to enjoy the show digitally. How do you do that? Well, go to uh, the Tool Talk Radio Facebook page. That's one way mm. you can see the post that we've made. I already made two posts this morning. Uh, one is our great moments in building history, which is really going to be interesting. Uh, we're going to be discussing the Royal Albert Hall, and uh, there's pictures up there. Uh, also, I've posted our must-have item of the week, which you'll, you can check out. So Okay. Um, and then also, uh, wait, I'm sorry. Then, uh, while you're on Facebook, you can watch the show if you scoot on over to the News Talk 98.9 The Roars Facebook page or the News Talk 98.9 The Roars X page, whichever platform you, you uh, prefer. Well, Alan, through circumstances uh, beyond our control, we haven't been on, man, it's been a couple of weeks since we've been here, so um, I hope we can remember how to do this. But uh, nah, we, just, we, we didn't know how to do it to start with. But so. I want to give a big shout out to all the the Tiger football. I mean that uh, that is a nice record, eight and three. We'll have to see where they go with their bowl games and everything. Yeah. But hats off to the uh, the Tigers, you know, football. Uh, I think that was pretty impressive. Uh, well, you a know, all season. of the Tiger programs have been. I guess they put the bunny ear quotes around it in growth mode for a couple of years. Yeah. And we're really starting to see the long game mm -hmm. start yeah. to come together. It's nice. And it's, you know, keep in mind, there's a lot of talent. There's a lot of logistics. There's a lot of chemistry that's got to go into getting really good teams together. Yeah. So hats off to everybody. Yeah. All the Tiger athletes. Yeah, all the moment, of the so. programs have been doing well. And as a result, though, we're a little behind. We, like I said, we haven't been on the air since, uh, you know, for the last couple of weeks. So um, one thing I do want to just quickly say a big shout out to everybody that came and stopped by your booth at the Memphis Comic and Famous oh, wow. Convention. You met a lot of listeners, didn't you? I met, a, I met so many people. I was just utterly amazed of. Uh, I'm I'm trying to think if there was any great uh, great holdout. But there was so many people that walked over and went, "Okay, which one are you, Joe or Alan?" Uh -huh. was, <laughs> yeah, because the physical descriptions don't you know it could physical be description. Or. The police are picking both of us up, right? right. So uh, but, it was just amazing. Um, if I did get a chance to meet you, Joe, Brandon, any of the of of on air other on air celebrities that were running around there, if we did get a chance to meet you. It was great to meet you. Come, you know, don't be a don't be a stranger. No, it was great, and and it was really fun partnering with all of uh, the Cumulus stations. Laddie from the Kicks One Hundred Six was there. He had a he set had up the best he, weekend. He made a lot of money too. He, yeah, he sold all of his collectibles. He, he so, had yeah. the best weekend. So big thank you to that. Uh, you probably won't be hearing much about the Memphis Comic and Fantasy Convention for several months. So I just wanted to put that out there that we did appreciate everybody that came by and dropped Tool Talk Radio's name. So oh, it was wonderful. Thanks, thanks for coming so all right well this isn't wonderful alan and mm. historically terrible i'm i'm really looking forward to this because i think this is an important but also it's fun it's going to be a fun discussion i guess as far as something that this deadly can be fun but 
in historically terrible, we're going to talk about asbestos. And uh, hey, man, it's still a, an ongoing. Uh, I've done enough remediation. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we have a call. To, well, it's not a call to action, but on this Thanksgiving weekend, uh, this is listener participation. We hope we'll hear from you. We'd like to know what tools or home improvements are you thankful for? Maybe you mm. had something this year, or maybe there's just something, if you sit back and reflect, it's like, boy, you know, I really love that hammer drill that I bought, or I really love that new, uh, you know, Vena hood that's in our home or exactly. so, whatever it is. It, it's all out on the table. You know, it's it's good to appreciate. We, we finally things. bought the table that fits in the living room. Exactly. We finally, yeah, that kind of stuff. We'll probably share a few of our things. I've got a few that are on the list. We've got more, and we're not going to tease anymore because you know how that goes. We mm -hmm. won't get to it. I'm sure we're going to have a, a must-have item of the week in Alan's week in review. But Max, you uh, you were interested in following up on uh, World Toilet Day, and so now, a deep cut with Maximilian. <laughs> Glad he didn't say a deep dive. Mm. <laughs> All right, what do you got for us? Oh, Max? I could have easily I'm like using the toilet sound effect, but World Toilet Day was actually a UN designated holiday, and it was founded by Jack Sim, a philanthropist from Singapore, who founded the first the World Toilet Organization in November 19, <laughs> 2001, and subsequently declared World Toilet Day. And you know what's nice? It's actually, like I said, a UN-designated holiday, and it's all about the sanitary rights of people. They consider sanitation a fundamental human right, like we state in the Constitution and Declaration of Independence. And they make a statistic. It's like, why are 3.5 billion people still living without safely managed sanitation services? And so World Toilet Organization, World Toilet Day, strives to raise awareness and also, it's a call to arms. <laughs> Are, no, I mean, it's you can't argue with any of that. It's like, I mean, we, you've talked about it, Alan, how many diseases have been prevented, mm -hmm. how much better the world smells. So, and you know yeah. what's cool, too? World Toilet Day has a mascot. Oh, my gosh. What and it's a hummingbird. Name? And you know what's kind of cool about this? The hummingbird, the reason being is because there's this ancient tale of a fire breaking out in a forest. All the ran animals ran for their lives except for the noble hummingbird who in its beak, um, uh, going back and forth between the lake, carried water in its beak and poured tiny drops on the water, on the fire. All the animals were mocking them, saying, why are you doing this? It's because they wanted to make their small little difference. And so World Toilet Day wants to help people become the hummingbird, making that small difference one drop at a time huh. or one flush at a time. <laughs> The hummingbird. So wait, this is obviously a mythical story, right? This, it is. Oh, okay. Because I was starting to think. I'm like, I don't know. Uh, you know, I don't, I haven't seen hummingbirds react that way. But well, I think it is the the which snowflake caused the avalanche. Oh, very good. kind of yeah. thing of you know when you begin looking at human history, and I hate to say it, but you really have to look at the history of plumbing. Sure. Because we have discussed Roman baths in the past and the fact that they were so good at moving water around. Yeah. It, it made that civilization, and we're talking 2,000 years ago, uh, they were building aqueducts that are actually still in use today. You can go to their fountains and put your thermos under there and fill it up and drink fresh spring water. It's, no filters it's a or thing. anything. So, so yeah. they know how to manage uh, water, water management and sanitation management. These are, you know, they're they're kind of the off color topics, but they are a very serious part of city planning, community planning, uh, where you want to live, how you want to live. Big well, you know, parts of this. You know what I like about this, Max, is World Toilet Day is something that who can disagree with this? Everybody can get behind this. I don't care what, you know, what, what your ideology is. Who is against clean plumbing, right? I mean. I mean, there are, <laughs> the reason they were talking about this is because they were, they were also mentioning the fact that there are still many people who, you know, have to function without functioning right. toilets. And so they have to openly, you know, yeah, let nature understand. call. Right, and and that causes all sorts of other problems. That so. is some problems. Well, so so we look forward to a day when everyone uh, can stand shoulder to shoulder, <laughs> arm in arm, <laughs> celebrating <laughs> the use of their. Uh, okay, well, we better. 
That's pretty good, though, man. Let's just like say that. good plumbing is a great thing. And so if you want to make a difference and you want to contribute, go to worldtoiletday.info. Okay. That's pretty interesting, Max. I like that. So very good. Now, I can't promise our next discussion is going to be very good because <laughs> we're going to take a deep dive into a historically terrible item, asbestos. Tool Talk Radio with Joe and Alan. The world is a question. This room is an answer. And the answer is no. News Talk 98.9. The roar of Memphis. Boy, did you uh, throw Alan on that one, Alan. (laughs) I know the reference. I need uh, more coffee. Okay. Boy, what a musical. And welcome back to uh, Tool Talk Radio, coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration <laughs> Studios. I'm just going to let our listeners mull over that one. Yeah, they didn't. Uh, I'm Joe <laughs> Thorson with Thor Hammer, Carpentry and Wood Turning. Here with my buddy Alan Gilbreth from darkoakmedia.com and the uh, confusing Max over there behind the glass. You can call or text us at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline at 901-683-0989. We also invite you to uh, watch the show. You can watch it in two different ways. You can go to the uh, News Talk 98.9 The Roar's uh, Facebook page and watch the show there. Or you can go to the News Talk 98.9 The Roar's X page. And also, we invite you to go to the Tool Talk Radio Facebook page and check out the posts we've made over there. So, well, a few things on the table, Alan. Uh, we, you know, people are, we're, we're interested in knowing how you celebrated uh, World Toilet Day on November 19th. It's, it, we're making a week-long celebration out of this. So, um, <laughs> also, we have a call to, uh, it's not a call to action, but we'd love to hear your stories. And on this Thanksgiving weekend, we'd love to know what tools or home improvements you're thankful for. We've got a list. You we'll could say the share. toilet. Don't worry. Sure. We'll, we'll probably, we've got a few and I'm sure we'll share ours later. But um, before we, uh, before we get to any of that, let's, let's get this out of the way, Alan. Oh my. This armor's useless. Why do we even wear it? Oh, you stink. This is the worst. I'm thankful for one tool. Yeah. My board that I get to push all these buttons. Yeah. You, and you sure do. But Max, thank you for that. But. Well, in Historically Terrible today, we are going to discuss asbestos, and I did a little... I Now, Alan, this is your wheelhouse. You you deal with this. You deal with mm. remediation. You yes, deal, yes, I, I have. I usually don't have to. If it's a serious asbestos situation, I just let... Uh, we've got other people yeah. that handle that for me. I'm generally building decks and things outside. You're so calling I've, someone like me. Yes. Right. But, but Alan, his, asbestos has done... Let's just be honest. It's done a lot of good, but it's done a lot of harm, too, throughout. Is it fair to say that? Of... Mixed bag? Well... It is a misunderstood technology, and yes, I would have to say it is equal parts um, advantageous, and you really don't want this stuff around. I feel like we've so. heard of asbestos for you know we've all our lives, and but I don't know that we understand how wide spread the use of asbestos is, or how far back it goes. That's what surprised me. I didn't realize how far back the use of asbestos. And can you tell us what you know? It, People may not know what asbestos is. Well, you know, it's one of those things everybody gets to hear about, but nobody really understands where it came from. Yeah. Um, asbestos is a, a altered form of crystalline thread. Mm. All right. A- so what, is the, what does all that mean? Uh, that means that these are materials that are available in nature. Of certain types of minerals form chains or hair-like substances, and of as far back as the Romans, right? Who were really good at stonework. Again, yep. we talked about the aqueduct just a moment ago. Of they began finding that you know a bed of this hair-like stuff doesn't burn. It's not chemically reactive. It has a certain what we would consider today an R factor or resistance to hot and cold change of this was kind of the early version of what we would use fiberglass for today. I was going to say, cause it's almost like a material. I mean, I guess you could, you could technically make a cloak of asbestos and you know, you can make a floor tile, you right. can make a pipe wrap, you could make almost anything you wanted and it insulated it. It held it in place and it prevented of, uh, let's say you had to run some pipes through a very moist area, oh, and you didn't yeah. want them to rust. Yep. So you would wrap them in, 
basically a mixture of a sealant and asbestos fibers. Or you had something you were concerned about uh, uh, starting a fire, like electrical wires. Exactly. You wrap it in a spe- and it's like... Oh God, or yeah. your kitchen floor, you would make asbestos tiles and put in there so that if something were to fall from the stove onto the floor, it would not catch fire. Now, back then, though, even in the Roman times, uh, according to the you know some of the research I did, they said they what they noticed, though, was the people working with asbestos had this unfortunate habit of dying at a young age, right? Well, I mean, and, and, and it, that's happened throughout history. Like, well, why are the all COPD, the people... Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, okay, well, this is where having the ability to look at something microscopically mm. makes a difference. Sure. Okay, Joe, got a question for you. Yeah. What makes a really good paintbrush? Uh, well, the bristles. It's all down to what the bristles. What about the bristles? Well, the, I okay. You don't want them flaying out at the end. That's my my thing. When they when they stay true and and tight and straight, right. you don't want them, f- yeah, curling at the ends and things right. Like so different materials, and I'm going to pick on boar's hair for a moment. Um, the the prickly hairs from the bottom side of a boar <laughs> yeah. of made really great brushes. And when you look at that microscopically, it's because it has all of these tiny little dendrites or ten or tentacles or little little raised areas all up and down the hair. Oh, and hold thus, the paint. It's surface area that holds the paint. Mm, okay. okay, now let's continue on down a little bit more microscopically. And now you begin to hit the air holding capability of asbestos. So it's porous and sharp. It's got all these tiny little needle-like protrusions all up and down the crystals. So that's what gives it this insulatory capability, the ability to hold on to stuff. So you're essentially inhaling micro razors. Exactly. Yeah. I'm picturing and, little shards of glass or yeah, ra- yeah. And because of the way they are designed. It and and it's going to kick up dust when you're working with this stuff. Exactly. Yeah. And now you are breathing this in. And because of the way the asbestos fibers are actually formed, the thing that makes asbestos work makes it work against your lungs. Mm. Because now your body cannot get them to expel. Right. So, yeah, you know, just, normally. And then you, they build up. And if you're working in a factory every day, using this stuff and when you get to and again this is just kind of where sometimes science and technology got to catch up to each other yeah because you know we find a product and it's kind of like well we have this really big need we have this product and this is how we're going to fill that need did you and speaking of science and technology is there a way to safely harness asbestos because it it seems like it you know, like taking advantage of what nature's giving you, but it, I guess maybe at the same time, maybe you shouldn't use everything that nature gives you. Yeah, I'm wondering if you could use it in like uh, rocket ships where it's completely contained or something in there. You know what I mean? Like, or is this just something better? Well, left? here we go. At some point, all things fail. Yeah. And that is the problem with asbestos. It's, yeah. So here we At we some have, point, you got to tear a house down. Exactly. Like, exactly. Yeah. Of. I will pick on the collapse of a building. Mm. You're going to blow up a building. You're going to collapse a building. A building falls over on its own. There's a natural disaster. You are going to aerosol these fibers. Mm. So this was a great idea at the time, but as we've learned more and more about it, we've learned this is a product that as far as the general world is concerned, we pretty much need to leave it alone. Well, and, and yes, yeah. Max, there are still some specialized uses for asbestos, but not in your home. Not wrapping a pipe in a hospital, no. not someplace where it can become accidentally aerosol. Now, people don't have to freak out about the word asbestos because so long as it's stable, it's, just it's not there. a problem. Right. It's, it's, it's not like a vapor that's, that's going to get you. It's not like CO2. An odorless gas that's going to get you. A radon. Yeah. Radon gas or something like that. Asbestos is is only a problem if disturbed. When you stir it up. so You yeah. got to stir it up. So if right. you live in an old home, uh, don't just go tearing the wall out until exactly. you find out if you got asbestos. This is where there. you need to find out whether or not that flooring 
could have as best to send it. All right, not too bad. I, we might have had a few parting thoughts when we come back, but that's pretty interesting. So uh, you're listening to Tool Talk Radio here at News Talk 98.9 Aurora, Memphis. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Tool Talk Radio with Joe and Alan. I made my first chair when I was five, but the quality of the wood was wanting. News Talk 98.9, the roar of Memphis. You know, I'd love to know what wood he used. It, 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 <laughs> some some wood is better than others for balsa. chairs. Balsa? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's where he went wrong. Mm. Little balsa chair. And we'll go back to uh, Tool Talk Radio, coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. I'm Joe Thorderson with Thor's Hammer, Carpentry and Wood Turning, here with my buddy Alan Gilbreth from darkoakmedia.com and our pal Max over there behind the glass. You can call or text us at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline at 901-683-0989. We also invite you to enjoy the show digitally. First of all, you can go over to the uh, Tool Talk Radio Facebook page and check out the posts we've made over there. And while you're on Facebook, then you can scoot on over to the News Talk 98.9, the Roars Facebook page, and uh, watch the show on the uh, studio cams. Uh, and if, you, if you're if you on the uh, X platform, if that's what you prefer, uh, the News Talk 98.9, the Roars uh, X page has the has the show going as well. So, um, Alan, we were talking about asbestos before the break and um, in our historically terrible, and I feel like it kind of behooves us to, what you know, people may be out there. For one thing, they may be wondering, does my home contain asbestos? And uh, how far back, because I thought there was a rule of thumb, this is like a pre-70s kind of thing? Or, yeah, uh, and generally. What do they do if they have asbestos, basically? Generally, and I, again, I'm using that word Carefully, generally, after 77 is right. when you get out of asbestos, cloth, aluminum, lead paint. Um, oh, lead paint's it, another one. Yeah, yeah, you know, we we had a lot of great, you know, quote, unquote, great ideas for a long time that, you know, as science and experience caught up with us, we decided these weren't so great ideas anymore. Right. Yep. So, of generally any construction after 77 you're fairly certain you don't have these these setbacks okay now there are a lot of you know there's a lot of people these days getting the older homes and renovating turn of the century homes and i'm not talking about 21st century i'm talking yeah. about 19th to 20th century turn of the turn on the homes of and you get in there and I would say go to your big box store, go to your local hardware store, or go online to any of the major retailers, and all of them carry radon test, they carry asbestos test, they carry lead test. So you can, with at least some of confidence, Mm -hmm. find out what you're working with before you start working with it. Well, what are these tests? So these tests are basically like... uh do they have like little readers? Because I know there's different types of things. Do you take a, some material and put it in a tube, or what? Do you it, well, they're all different types. Okay. So, of I would say go online and look around, and some tests are mail in. If you don't want to do this yourself, there are a number of companies. Again, you can look in your local area and get a list of people that will come out and look for mold, asbestos, lead cloth covers, aluminum wiring, and that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. If you have an older home, just do it anyway. Because you may be breathing in things for years and you don't want to be. Well, you know, if you're looking at, you know, a home from the 1920s, which is entirely possible here in Memphis. Sure. And it does we, as now as you and I both know, we have listeners around the world. Well, so, you've pointed that out. They have really old homes. And you, they're listening you know, we've, Great Britain we've or something. got quite a quite a nice following in the UK, and of you know, the UK kind of giggles when we start talking about antiques. Mm, yeah. You know, because uh, you know they got some of uh, they know about antiques. Yeah, they, they've got some pottery sitting around that might have been in the family for a thousand years, right. as opposed to a hundred years. So yes, you can run into a lot of bizarre things from the past. They were great ideas in 1910, but by 1950, we'd figured out they weren't such a great idea. Good point. So, so. a little testing, especially if you're looking at buying and renovating one of these places, yep. I'm going to advocate buy it and renovate it, but know what you're getting into 
before you make the purchase. Okay, sounds good. And as a parting thought, if you want to thank somebody, if you want to thank somebody for who came up with the word asbestos, well, it comes from ancient Greek. It, it it's a combination of the word a, which means no, and asbestos, mm. which means quench. And so it literally means unquenchable, and it reflects the use of a substance like a wick that would never burn up. Oh, because they made can't so unquenchable. Asbestos, which it doesn't sounds cool. Stop. It's a, it's a <laughs> it very appealing stop. name, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we found out there's a dark. There's always a downside to everything. Uh, well, yeah. you know, every every technology we embrace has a cost. Yeah, and we're learning as we're as we've moved forward. You and I've talked about this with paint a lot of times. Of uh, latex paint doesn't explode. Oil paint was bombing a can. Yeah, uh, you know, so we've moved into technologies as we developed them and then as we learn more and new technologies come along older technologies be are supplanted and you know forward we go you know that's a perfect lead in to discuss okay very good so our historically terrible was a pretty informative and i think a cautionary tale and something that you should pay attention to even today so yes well but uh on that note Let's uh let's talk about our good buddy Larry Brown from Brown Refrigeration, who I just happened to see this week. He's got a project that we're going to be working on. They're doing a, um this is the older home we were talking about right. the uh, this laundry room that I'm building. They're going to be doing a mini split solution here because there's Ooh, literally I no those. well with there, it, it would be very difficult to run any ventilation to this. Uh, this is a very exposed area. I told you it's completely added on to the home the, right. the, the, so they decided the mini splits the way to go but um when when i was talking to you know when i was i was there with the homeowner and i was there with uh larry brown and it was really fun being kind of like an, a a fly on the wall observing their conversation and it's it's kind of like uh what we've talked about for years here about larry brown the conversation wasn't just what are you going to need today it's like what what unit makes the most sense five years from now when a part fails or when you need servicing on this and he was talking about the companies that they deal with that uh that they provide the best customer service and they and you can call and get a part to you the next right. day and things like that which is something you don't always think about you might your you might just go to the bottom line of what is the cheapest unit to install well right. in the long run that's not the cheapest unit because for one thing it may not be as effective but it really demonstrated the dynamic personality of Larry Brown and how his sort of holistic approach to um to HVAC because it wasn't just about the, the solution for today. And it also was about what's going to provide the cleanest air, what is going to um, be the most effective, what's going to give you the best utility bill over the time. And really, it, it that comes from his years of HVAC training. I mean, this is all the guy does. I mean, yep. We're going on almost 50 years of Larry Brown as an HVAC man. So, um, but uh, if you need an HVAC company, which we all do living here in the Mid South, that's what you want. You want somebody with that expertise. You want somebody that is going to be around for the long haul and somebody that thinks really holistically about your HVAC unit, including uh, the Remy Halo system, which has really become an integral part of every, it should be a part of everybody's system. It's, 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 affordable and it is something that really it changes the the air that comes out of your uh hvac unit it uh, uses the uv power of the sun to uh, create cleaning air particulates and that every every bit of air that comes out of this uh hvac unit is now clean and it cleans every surface that it hits which uh we're talking about uh you know asbestos and we're talking about all these other harmful particulates in the air uh, it's also a great idea to get brown refrigeration out there every year or so to clean your ducts, and uh, that's something they're they're an expert at as well. Clean air is, I mean, we want to eat healthy and drink healthy and breathe healthy. So you want to breathe the best quality air, and you also want a unit that's going to function properly and uh, be there and for the long haul. So you can't beat the folks at Brown Refrigeration. They are a rock solid company. We love we love Larry Brown and his whole team over there. You can call them directly at 901-362-1881 or go to their very easy-to-remember website, brownref.com. Well, Alan, we have a few things on the table today. One of them is uh, we, we'd like to hear from some of our listeners about this. It's Thanksgiving weekend. What are you thankful for? What tools are you thankful for? What home improvements are you thankful for? Can I kick one off? Mm, I, go for I, it. I had uh, an experience this year. I guess I'm thinking of, you know, over the past year, kind of reflecting back, 
Um, I had a situation, and uh, this involves my 12, uh, uh, well, this involves a sink clog, right? Okay. So under my sink, under our kitchen sink, we have a farmhouse sink that I installed about a year or so ago. And um, we have sort of some squirrely plumbing, as you might imagine, mm -hmm. you know who the previous owner was. But um, anyway, we have this cap, like a clean out, a clean out drain, which is nice. It's in under the sink. You right. can pull it off. We had a very bad clog under there. I think uh, somebody in my family who will not be named was putting things down the mm. garbage disposal that shouldn't have gone down there. And it built up over time. Well, the problem was I have one of those 12-foot snakes that you can run through the drain. Right. But every time I got to one point, it just, I couldn't get, you know how there's corners and you're right. going through, well, I could not get through. Every time it would just jam. It, I spent two or three hours trying to do this. Finally, I went to uh, the big box store and I found, um, it's, an, it's, a, it's another 12-foot drain snake, but it had a plastic coating or not a coating mm -hmm. but you know what i mean like a wrap i don't know what you right. call that it had a sleeve on it <clears throat> it had a sleeve exactly i got that this thing and so the sleeve uh the the you can still crank it and the snake turns independently and the sleeve sort of stays put but it's made of this slippery plastic material man i stuck that in there in three minutes i got to that you know mm -hmm. i got to the part where it was jamming me up i pushed it in it made it right around that curve and within minutes, I had unclogged that drain. And it was simply because of that innovative plastic sleeve. And I'm like, what a simple idea. And that, that thing saved me, you know, because I'm not going to call a plumber unless I absolutely have to. You right. Because well, I'm going to do it myself. But that thing cost me uh, probably 20 bucks or something. And right. that is now one of my new favorite tools. So I am <laughs> very thankful for that, uh, for the 12-foot uh, uh, drain snake with the plastic sleeve. You got anything? Of, I mean, you, you got know, a whole holster of tools. Oh to be my gosh! For. Of you know, well, I'm gonna say my my single most used tool of in the arsenal is either my cute little 12 volt you know drill. Oh yeah, which you know I've I've had for a million years and uh, continue to still use at this you know forever and ever and ever because it's just the right size to get into a lot of the smaller tighter areas where a big drill doesn't really fit. It is an older drill, too. That yeah. thing is, that's they're pushing 10 years old each. For, for, uh, I got two for of them. Battery power, that's almost ancient technology. They, they're, they're, they're from back there. Yeah. Of, of course, my Sawzall is, well, you know, it reigns supreme. Your Sawzall is on the nightstand of your bed, oh isn't it? So it's like <laughs> <laughs> it ought to be. <laughs> That thing has been through more buildings, walls, trees, bushes. Of, I have done things to that poor Sawzall I am sure were never envisioned at uh, whoever invented reciprocating saws. The Sawzall is one of those tools that, uh, because when you're done, you're like, oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, it's just, well, right now it's been nails. Hmm. Oh, yeah, cleaning nails, nails off of things. Oh, my gosh. Well, that's what we're looking for, folks. We want to know what you're thankful for. So uh, call, call in uh, at the uh, call or text the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline, 901-683-0989. This is Tool Talk Radio. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Tool Talk Radio with Joe and Alan. And we have radon coming from below. We have asbestos in the ceilings. These are silent killers. You are the silent killer. News Talk 98.9, the roar of Memphis. We can't argue with them there. I mean, we've been discussing it all morning. And welcome back to uh, Tool Talk Radio, coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. I'm Joe Thorderson with Thor's Hammer, Carpentry and Wood Turning, here with my buddy Alan Gilbreth from darkoakmedia.com and our pal Max over there behind the glass. You can call or text us at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline at 901-683-0989, especially uh, on this Thanksgiving weekend if you've got something that you're thankful for in the home improvement realm, if you've got a tool that you're really grateful for. We've shared a couple of tool tales we're happy, you know, we're thankful for. Uh, or maybe there's a particular home improvement that you've done to your home that you're especially thankful for. Uh, we'd like to hear about it on this uh, Thanksgiving weekend. Get in touch with us, uh, 901-683-0989. Uh, we also invite you to enjoy the show digitally. You can go to the uh, Tool Talk Radio Facebook page, um, check out the posts we've made over there, 
And then while you're on Facebook, scoot on over to the News Talk 98.9, The Roar's Facebook page. And uh, you can check out the, uh, you can watch the show on the, um, you can check that out and see two thirds of the show. You're not going to ever see Max on there unless we somehow <laughs> secretly pivot the camera, Alan. Uh, or if you're over on X, you can always watch the show over on the uh, News Talk 98.9, The Roar's X page. So, um uh, I think somebody's weighing in on the text. We're we're gonna get to your thing in a minute, but it looks like somebody jumped on the phones, Max. So uh, what do we got there? Ricky's got a tool he's thankful for. Oh, good. Okay, Ricky, uh, put him up on the air, Max. So, Ricky, how's it going this morning? Uh, cold. <laughs> cold. Oh, okay. Hey, this is nothing, man. This is it's good. It's good for the lungs, right? Right now, mm, yeah. Good for true. the immune system. So. <laughs> Well, Ricky, uh, it's Thanksgiving weekend, what, and you say you've got something that you're uh, that you're thankful for. Yeah, I found a little oscillating tool. It's not much bigger than a handheld electric uh, battery powered screwdriver, but it's got like nine different blades, and mm -hmm. you can do anything with this. You can cut tile, grout, wood, nails. Uh, I've even cut um, the hardy board, the the concrete board. Nice. I mean. And, you know, thirty nine dollars. You know, I've I've worn two out in three years. Are they are they battery powered or are they plug in? No, they they do make a battery powered now, but the ones that I get are always plug in because they're just more resilient. Okay, here we go because this is good. Now this is good. We want to get an outside. Uh, one of my things, and I I have to say I've come around a lot to battery powered tools. One of the things I was resistant to in the past was I didn't think they had. I didn't think the battery powered had enough torque. So, are you kind of feeling that way with these with these oscillating tools that you're buying? Is uh... well, the oscillating tool runs on such a high RPM that the battery life is only about fifteen or twenty minutes that I found. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I always get the the, the plug-in version, and I can run it off a generator. Um, heck, I've even run it off of a, uh, a inverter off of my car. <laughs> so you've worked on your car with this baby yes sir can you can you describe okay i think i know the one you're talking about i know we have to be careful we can't always give name brands here on the show but uh can you describe what this thing looks like because i think i know the one you're talking about it's a it's red <laughs> now, the first one i had was blue the, the, the last one i've gotten is red and it's lasted a lot longer and it was cheaper um, and did not get it at a big box store. Um, I got it at a local hardware store. I know the one you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Well, probably um, over on I Summer Avenue. Avenue. Yeah. yeah. Well, the uh, the great thing with those little oscillating tools is exactly that. It's the vibratory rate that they operate at, and it is shocking what such a tiny little tool can do. Wait, oscillating well, is just like a, a it's just like a sawzall, right? It's going up and down, right? That's what you mean? Uh, right. well, yep, yeah, but it's going side to side. And yeah. if you're not careful, you, you will catch a two before on tire on fire yes. trying to cut a nail. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, I know. Yes, the, okay. I know the one you're talking yeah. about. Okay. Yeah. The blade kind of goes side to side yes. and you can tuck it under like, like you said, you could tuck it under a two by four. If you have the right blade, could you cut through nails and things with mm -hmm. this? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, I, I do flooring work every once in a while, and I've used it as a jam saw also. Oh, awesome. yeah. This is great, man. Well, we sure appreciate it. Hey, we'd love you to text uh, a picture. Could you do that at some point? Text it over to our uh, hotline, and uh, we could post that for you. Oh, I'll see if I can get it done today. Awesome. Well, Ricky, thanks for weighing in, and this is exactly the kind of thing we're talking about. That's uh, because I'm sure you've been in a pinch, and suddenly you reach for this baby. And uh, now, do you have a name for this tool? Like, you know, have you given it a nickname? <laughs> no, my buddy calls it the ant ant saw. Okay. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> it goes, it I don't know. Ant, ant. I think maybe the <laughs> snake or the uh, ferret or something, but it needs a good, it needs its own nickname. It sounds like it's come through for you. But hey, Ricky, we sure appreciate you listening and and weighing in on the uh, on the hotline, man. Thanks for calling in. I love your show, man. Appreciate you. All right, there we go. Thanks, Ricky. Now that's what we want exactly. That and I I know the feeling. And okay, he made he brought up a point that I didn't think of, but um. My one complaint I would have, he was talking about how quickly the batteries wear mm -hmm. out because of the speed of the motor. I did find, you know, I told you that I came around and I bought a battery-powered chainsaw. You did. 
That is my one complaint. The batteries are gone in five minutes. I mean, they poop out pretty quickly. But uh, that was great to hear from him. Ricky, thanks for that. And I hope you all send in pictures. And we'd love to hear from you if you've got some tool tales, if you've got a tool or or a home improvement. If you Like we said, if you've got a Venna hood that you just love, send us a picture or call or text. You know, we'd love to hear from you. But all right, well, Alan, let's, let's turn the corner. <laughs> oh, the humanity. <laughs> This, of course, is the part of the show uh, <laughs> where we hear what Alan did this week because you never and we're know what it deafen might be. everyone. And 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 yeah, Max blew out the speakers on your radio and deafened everybody. But what did you do this week, my friend? Well, all right, you were going to divide it into two different properties this week. Okay. Of all right, property A of this is uh this is the one with a uh, the the pool house that is now a fully functioning and completely stocked greenhouse. Yeah. It is full of plants. It's doing great. If you're so. new to Tool Talk Radio, Alan is he he totally renovated a pool house that is very wide open. It's more like a cabana. And then what you did is enclosed it for the winter so that it is now a uh uh, a greenhouse, it's which is a great idea. Yeah, man. fully functional greenhouse. Probably nice and to look at, too. We'll take the panels off in the spring, and they'll turn back into your pool cabana. Boom. So, however, at this particular property, uh, there was a completely out-of-control holly bush. And I use the word bush lightly because we're going to say all-encompassing, I'm trying to be a tree. Uh, uh, just out of curiosity, is Holly the one with those annoying spikies? Yes, um, the one that tries to kill that, you. That, yeah. Those things are way sharper than they look, too. Yes, yes, Even they with are. gloves, they'll poke yes, through the gloves. they're I hate absolutely those miserable. Yeah. And the backside of this property, uh, with the pandemic and everybody and the world, you know, it just kind of got left, mm. got left behind. And back when it was nice, warm, and green and all that, we had gone down there to look at, you know, how badly overgrown it had become. Yep. And, you know, the poor homeowner is looking at us going, all right, it's hopeless. I'm going to have to, you know, hire the forestry service to come in here and get all this done. And I'm like, nah, let's just give it a little time. So we waited, and you know what? It's now November. All yeah. that greenery is gone. Oh, yeah. You just let nature and now take its course. Now you can get in there with a lawnmower and a weed sling and a sawzall mm -hmm. and all those little privet bushes that have come up and all that stuff. And we are recovering this property at great rate. Well, so, you waited till the right time. And to, it's do, yeah. perfect time of year. And I'm, I'm advocating this because... Uh, like you like to work outside this time of year. Sure. This is your favorite I time of year to be out working there. in the cold and the heat. I love the landscaping aspect of getting things done now. Mm. You don't yep. have to deal with the bugs. You don't have to deal with all the critters. And stuff is not a complete jungle trying to eat you. Yeah. Uh, you can really get in and see what you're doing. And if you got a lot of big trees and you're lawn mowing and you're you're turning the stuff over, you're making really good mulch. Oh, good point. So, all right. Well, hey, now she's the top of the. the Where'd the first hour go? <laughs> we'll continue the conversation about what you did, and then, of course, we can't get, wait to get to our great moments in building history, where we discuss the Royal Albert Hall. You're listening to Tool Talk Radio. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. News Talk 98.9, the roar of Memphis. Tool Talk Radio with Joe and Alan. And welcome to Hour 2 of Tool Talk Radio, coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. I'm Joe Thorderson with Thor's Hammer, Carpentry and Wood Turning. You're with my buddy Alan Gilbreth from darkoakmedia.com and our pal Max behind the glass. You can call or text us at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline at 901-683-0989. And especially today on this Thanksgiving weekend, um, we, we have sort of a call to our listeners. Um, and we, we, we heard from Ricky a little while ago. Uh, we want to hear uh, what home improvements or tools uh, are you particularly thankful for this year? Ricky has a great multi-purpose oscillating tool. It sounds like one of these... The, that cuts through everything. I know mm -hmm. that I know what he's talking about. I thought it was fascinating that he said the it, it's actually you have to be careful with it. That it doesn't set the two by four on fire. The blade moves yes. that fast. So wow. 
But uh, it sounds like it's bailed them out in many situations. So if you're in a similar vein and you want to share a tool tale or something that uh, that you're thankful for, get in touch with us at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline, 901-683-0989. We also encourage you to, uh, if you uh, want to get involved digitally, you can go to the Tool Talk Radio Facebook page and uh, check out the posts we've made over there. Like the page and share the page. And while you're on Facebook, you can scoot on over to the News Talk 98.9 the Roar's Facebook page, and watch the show on our studio cams. Or if you're over on X, you can watch the show that way. Well, before the break, we were checking in with Alan's Week in Review, and uh, it sounds to me, Alan, like you were employing the weighted-out landscaping technique <laughs> where uh, you had a lot of daunting landscaping work to be done, and you just, you know what? In November, this stuff's going to die anyway. Let's that just, is right. Is that pretty much what you did? And That's it. Makes a lot of sense. Why not? Uh, you, know? It, you know, it's just you can see better. You can get in there better. And again, you're not worried about the ticks and the mosquitoes and the right. the mess. And the best part is once you get it done, it stays done until March. Well, I had, a, I had an important question for you on that regard. Does poison ivy fall into that category? Yes, Because, you know, I'm does. very susceptible to yes. that. And uh, so does it kind of calm down yep. when it gets cold? Yep. It's, okay. it's, it's withered and gone, and it's a great time to really get in there. The only thing you're really going to run into is, of course, you've still got your bramble. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, yeah. The, the blackberry, wild rose, uh, honeysuckle vines, and privet. Right. Of In which case... A variety of companies do make a pruning blade. Mm. Actually make a pruning blade to go on your reciprocating saw. Okay. Now so we're talking. this makes a whole big difference to the world because I have learned trim that stuff off below the ground level, just right at the ground. Yeah. So that the lawnmower will go over. Mm. Yep. And it makes it makes recovering trashy parts of your property a lot easier. I'm not telling anybody to do this because I did break my uh, reciprocating saw doing this, but you can take that. I know the blade you're talking about. It's like a 12 inch blade. Oh, and it's beautiful. Uh, I use that to, uh, I use that to cut. It was almost doing the job of a chainsaw. I got a little carried away and I tried to take out a tree stump that was about 12 <laughs> inches in diameter and that finally did it in. But for the most part, you're right, man, that blade. Mm. Oh man. And, and it's so it's, such a satisfying because it cuts through quickly. It does. And, it does. Uh, yep, yep. That's so that's. Then you know. we had property number two. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, because this sounds like smooth sailing so far. Yeah, that but. one was pretty good. Uh, again, it's just, you know, knowing what you're getting into. And like you said, waiting it out and looking at your landscaping now. Mm, yeah. Great idea. A lot less work. Right. Uh, property number two. Well, this one is a complete rebuild. So this is the one where we had to cut away part of the building. It's been rebuilt. We've got the exterior walls up. We got the interior framing finally done. You tore everything out to, down to studs because you said the studs were in oh, bad shape too. Oh, we went too. past down to the studs. We okay. went, and these are all going to go away too. Okay. This literally began at big hole dirt. Let's put in a let's let's start with a foundation. Wow. So of uh, the biggest thing was a getting it connected to city water. Oh, because it's this is a more remote house. right? This this is a little out in the country okay. and it's got a uh, uh, talking about being able to flush your toilet. Yeah. Of that has not been able to happen in the year and a half we've been working on this project. Oh, wow. Because it's had no water in the house. Mm. So we had to uh, get a great big excavation machine, a.k.a. quote-unquote the ditch witch, <laughs> and had to cut from the city installation down by the road all the way up to the property and tie into the plumbing. Not all that difficult, just time-consuming, take your time, and for heaven's sake, make sure your plumbing is clean. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when you bring that in. It sounds like you saved this homeowner a lot of money because I could see that being a huge expense if oh, you, yeah. if you just had to get, bring an outside company in. So. Oh, yeah, massive. Uh, however, there is a flush toity in the house for the rest of the construction. Nice. Oh, yes, very nice. Uh, and this is where I'm going to get to the tool I am most grateful for this year. Oh, okay. And that is uh, nicknamed, I didn't name it, 
The rest of the crew named it. But uh, I'm going to talk about Bertha. <laughs> okay. Bertha is a big red sheetrock lifter. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. We've seen this. We have been, we, we have moved from the, I'm going to say the slow, not sexy part of building a house. Because, mm. you know, framing and the wood and trying to get stuff, it still doesn't really look like a house. No, until you start finishing it off. And then, yeah. you know, the exterior walls are done. We got the doors up. We got the windows in. And at that point, you really start kind of getting a scope of where you're at. Mm. But it really doesn't look like a house until the insulation goes into the exterior walls. And, you know, we got the R30 on the ceiling. We got the R19 on the walls. So this thing's insulated. And there's something about those first few pieces of sheetrock. Mm. When they go up... Now, suddenly, the job gets exciting. You know, can I say something? And, and uh, I just want you, you're making me uh, reflect about something. So there was a period where I did some work where I was uh, partnered up with, uh, uh, they did kitchen remodeling and things like that. Right. Or, and and uh, they did other remodeling. And, and my job was more or less, I would come in, I would put the sheetrock in, the trim work, and the painting. And I always, you know, I always felt sorry for the other guys because they did all of this work. They yes. did, and I was always the one getting all the praise. They're like, "Wow, this looks so great," and everything. Well, of course, I, it wouldn't look like anything if they didn't get it all ready in advance. But until you've got the sheetrock and the trim and the, mm. it really doesn't look like anything. It looks like a big mess. That, that's that's it's correct. the most rewarding part of it. So yeah, that that is true. And and, now and it starts to feel like a home. And now I will also throw in a cautionary tale. That this is also, this particular property is a great example of 50 years, 40 years, 30 years, and 20 years of absolute stupidity. Oh, yeah. You said this was because a, yeah. I have this was never, a clown show. I have never pulled so many nails out of walls before in my life. Oh, man. It, it's just like if there was a doubt, you put a nail in it. <laughs> That's all I got to say. I have never pulled so many nails in my life. So, but it's coming along nicely. I've been sending you pictures you can post. Yeah, we got to post um, those. So, yep. uh, It is really starting to look good. We're done with the ceiling and we began the walls this week. And that's, I got to tell you, that gets you excited. Oh, yeah. Now those walls start coming in and it starts... You're thinking, all right, the, almost ready to paint. The end is in sight. So. It is. All right. Well, we'll stay. We'll we'll stay tuned for more developments with Alan's week in review. You're listening to Tool Talk Radio coming to you from the. Uh, to, let me start over. You're listening to Tool Talk Radio. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I can't wait. We're going to discuss the Royal Albert Hall in our great moments in building history. Tool Talk Radio with Joe and Alan. This is glue. Strong stuff. News Talk 98.9, the roar of Memphis. Pretty good endorsement there. I mean, I, he mm. didn't give any brand names, though. So, but, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, welcome to, uh, t I don't know, whatever. Welcome back to uh, Tool Talk Radio, coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. I'm Joe Thorderson with Thor's Hammer, Carpentry and Wood Turning. Here with my buddy Alan Gilbreth from darkoakmedia.com and our pal Max over there behind the glass. We invite you to call or text us at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline at 901-683-0989, uh, especially uh, this Thanksgiving weekend. If you've got a, a tool or a home improvement you're particularly thankful for, we've been sharing some of ours. The, one of our listeners, Ricky, called in to uh, showcase one of his tools that he's appreciative of and so we'd love to hear from you we'd also love to hear from you if you've ever visited the royal albert hall mm. in in uh, great britain because in a moment that's what we're going to be discussing in our great moments in building history and it looks like a really cool structure I'd, if if i ever make it to england one day i definitely want to make a make a stop there it'd be great to see a show or a performance there but uh, that's what we're going to be discussing shortly. So you could weigh in at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline once again, 901-683-0989. We also invite you to uh, enjoy the show digitally. You can go to the Tool Talk Radio Facebook page, like the page, and share the page. 
And then while you're over on Facebook, go over to the News Talk 98.9, the Roar's Facebook page, and watch the show on the studio cams. And also, you can watch the show on the News Talk 98.9, the Roar's X page. Well, in a moment, we're going to get to our great moments in building history. Before we do that, I want to uh, talk about another man I spoke to this week. Um, uh, our good buddy, Jay Hill, with Big M Roofing and Remodeling, mm -hmm. who we're working on another project together. But... Um, you know, I don't know how we uh, attract these guys, Alan, because um, but somehow we wind up with people that are just at the top of their game in the uh, in their respective fields. When it comes to the exterior protection of your home, uh, there's nobody better than our good buddy Jay Hill with Big M Roofing and Remodeling from uh, roofing, siding, gutters and windows from the top down. Uh, he, you can't beat him. It's funny. I'm just noticing something, Alan. I've been holding this business card for two years, and I just realized Jay's Jay Hill's uh, business cards are waterproof. Mm -hmm. They're kind of like a plastic material. Yes. I think there's something there. I wonder if he knows that his his business cards are waterproof he or does. if he did that on purpose. He so. does. All right, Jay, I finally got it two yep. years later. <laughs> but um, if you have any, for one thing, okay, Jay only deals with the best. He's a, He is exclusive with GAF products because... Uh, they are they are really at the cutting edge of roofing technology. They they, they create what uh, are now known as roofing systems. I don't remember hearing the word roofing system back when I was you know no. uh, younger. These days, uh, these systems are so effective that they can offer a lifetime transferable warranty. Jay is always five stars with the Better Business Bureau and good housekeeping. And also, what sets Jay apart is his unique uh, history. He is a former insurance agent and. Believe me, that's a big deal because uh, one of the things with it, it, this comes into play a lot with roofing, but also exterior damage to your home. If you have any damage to your home that may be covered by your homeowner's insurance, that is a very tricky process to navigate. And you really right. need, you almost need like a legal advocate. And that's where Jay comes in. He, he will, uh, for one thing, it's a free consultation, but he will come in and he um, is very well versed in, in all of the protocols. And he's always up on the latest uh, information in that realm. And so if you have a path forward where you can have um, this damage replaced, uh, by your homeowner's insurance, that's going to save you thousands of dollars. And so you need you need to be an informed consumer there. And there's nobody better than Jay Hill to help you navigate that process. So also, if you need funding, he's got 30 lenders at his disposal that uh, you're bound to qualify for uh, some of those. And then once you qualify, you can choose the terms that work best for you. Jay is an all-around great guy. We're very proud to be associated with him. And uh, the, the, there is a unique energy that occurs when Jay Hill and his team arrive on the job. And it's it's full of optimism and excitement, and it's just a really uh, great experience. So call Jay directly. He always encourages you to call him directly at 901-484-5645 or go to his uh, website, BigMRoofingAndRemodeling.com. All right, Max. Well, this is another. This is gonna be another good one. And now, great moments in building history. Um. Okay. Today on Great Moments in Building History, we're gonna discuss the Royal Albert Hall in. Uh, let's see. It is. I know it's in in England, Alan, but it's in uh, Hyde Kensington. Park, Kensington, Kensington right. which I'm assuming is that like a suburb of uh, London or something like that. Uh, South Kensington is a suburb of London, and they're in a specific area called the Kensington Gore. Okay, so I think most people have heard of the Royal Albert Hall. I mean, it's been named in uh, Beatles songs, mm. and uh, you know, um, everybody who's anybody has performed there. Um, I want to just say something right out of the gate. I know you're going to maybe uh, roll your... I don't know if you'll roll your eyes at this, mm. but this is just something that I noticed. So when I was doing the research for the Royal Albert Hall, the first person I thought of is the motorcycle boy from the book Rumblefish. And you're probably going to go, what the heck does this have to do with the Royal Albert Hall? Well, no, I think, I think I'm with you. Okay, in the book Rumblefish by S.E. Hinton, I don't know if this is a spoiler, but, uh, you know, when you were a kid, you read all the S.C. Hinton books, The Outsiders. Right, right, okay. right. Um, so in the book, his brother, Rusty James, said that um, when they go to movies, the motorcycle boy was a little a little unusual of a guy. Right. They said he didn't watch the movie. He watched the people in the theater. That was right. what he was fascinated by. Well, when you look at the Royal Albert Hall, it is such a unique arena. Now we're familiar with the um, we're familiar with like the Orpheum Theater. I dare say most right. people in town have probably gone. Well, you sit in your seat and the stage is in front of you. 
you don't see a whole lot of the people around you because you're focused on the stage. Well, the Royal Albert Hall is set up almost like a, an arena. And one one way I've heard it explained was uh, Roger Daltrey from The Who said, it's like performing for 5,000 people in your living room. Mm -hmm. You see everybody around you. The performers see everybody in the right. audience. It's a very, it creates a very interconnected and intimate performance uh, space. And I have to believe it probably alters the way a lot of performances are done. And it's just a really cool venue, and it's got a lot of neat history. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Well, and it's not a huge venue either. Uh, 5,000 people is not a lot. I mean, it, it's, you know. yeah, when you consider a lot of modern, uh, modern events, 5,000 people just isn't that many. No, I think it works to their advantage, though. It doesn't dwarf you. It, you feel, like you said, you feel very connected. It's an intimate connected. setting. Right. right. Of, all right, well, let's go back in time and let's go to the Foundation Stone. Because okay. it is actually a really cool thing, if you haven't looked it up. Uh, the stone actually was engraved. And it said, this stone was laid by Her Most Gracious Majesty. So, Queen Victoria herself actually set the very first stone and she did it with a gold trowel yeah and we let's 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 say this that's this just is, way too cool i believe it was 1871 so the, the the it started um this so now let's let's uh give credit where credit's due prince albert uh who this is uh that was his wife, right? I mean, that was her husband. Right. And uh, they were deeply in love. They were a nice couple. She was so, you know, I guess, you know, spoiler, he he passed away before he saw the, the hall open. But they were big supporters of the arts, which we always appreciate. Yes. And uh, in 1851, they did an exhibition. They set up a temporary exhibition space in Hyde Park, which at that point was kind of countryside. It was like, like we, it would be almost like us going out to... Uh, the parts of Collierville that haven't been developed or anything like that and setting up something, but it was so successful that they wanted to establish something more permanent. So they were going to establish buildings and performance centers. And at the centerpiece of this was they, they weren't calling it the Royal Albert hall back then. It was going to be something, you know, more along the lines of just uh, the, the, the great hall or something like that. But uh, the design is so interesting because they talked about rectangular designs. They talked about, easier to construct designs because this is more or less an oval building yes um which is harder to construct but it creates like we said such a cool space i mean the the space is what fascinates me you know just well, the, the experience of being inside of that and the you know when we we go back to the romans and we talk about the aqueducts and that kind of thing the cool thing is the technology of the day was good enough to fit stones together so tightly that they're still working together 2,000 years later. Mm. Of Queen Victoria set this foundation stone in 1867. It's still there. The Albert Hall has held tens of thousands of people over the years, back and forth. And the building, uh, the way it was built, it was designed to hold up. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't like a, eh, you know, 50 years from now we'll be replacing this. This was honestly built to be there for the ages. Right. And 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 now we should say, too, the idea was that they wanted to build a center for arts and sciences that would be used by the public. This wasn't made for the hoi polloi. This was right. supposed to be everybody could use this. and. It, it works. I mean, it's to this day, it still works. So we're going to unpack this a little more. It's a really fascinating structure. We've posted pictures on our Facebook page, so check it out. Uh, you're listening to Tool Talk Radio. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Tool Talk Radio with Joe and Alan. When my new apprentice arrives, he will take care of. News Talk 98.9, the roar of Memphis. Yeah, so he says. As I recall, his apprentice got cut in half by Obi-Wan Kenobi. But, you know, anyway, uh, <laughs> don't roll your eyes at me, Alan. <laughs> anyway, welcome back to uh, Tool Talk Radio, coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. I'm Joe Thorderson with Thor's Hammer, Carpentry and Wood Turning, here with my buddy Alan Gilbreth from darkoakmedia.com and our pal Max over there behind the glass. 
You can call or text us at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline at 901-683-0989. We also invite you to watch the show on the uh, News Talk 98.9 The Roars Facebook page or the News Talk 98.9 The Roars X page. And while you're on social media, be sure to drop by the Tool Talk Radio Facebook page, like the page, share the page, and check out the uh, posts we've made over there, including uh, some cool images of the... uh, conversation we're having now in our great moments in building history about the royal albert hall uh construction was pretty pretty efficient they built this thing in about four years they laid the uh laid the foundation in 1867 and it was opened in uh, march of 1871 uh queen victoria and her and her late husband uh, Prince Albert were big supporters of the arts. And what I appreciate about them is they were trying to make the arts and sciences accessible to the public. Because, I mean, back in the day, let's face it, we had that there was a lot of distinction between right. the rich and the poor and everything. And this seems like a really good community uh, effort, or an effort to help the community by making uh, performances and making a space that's conducive to unique, you know, art uh available to the public because now there there are the fancy seats there there's a box seats up above but really a lot of this was within the budget of most people to enjoy and what i kind of like about it it echoes the sentiments of people like william shakespeare when he created the globe theater it even looks kind of (laughs) globular so i I, there's got to be a psychology to that right because the globe theater oh okay and alan i know one of your favorite (laughs) shows is the um is the uh Phantom of the Opera, right? That's one that you're a big mm-hmm. fan of. I am a big fan okay. of that one. Yes. Well, when you look at the Great Albert Hall and the way it's constructed, as we said, it is it, it I have to believe it changes the dynamic if you're a if you're a, a performer or if if you're in a band or if you're putting on a play, it changes the dynamic of how you perform it. It's I would dare say it's almost its own unique one-off performance when it's done in the Albert Hall because you it, it if if you go see uh, uh if you were to see the Phantom of the Opera at the Orpheum, you're looking straight ahead at the at the uh, stage. Well, at the Albert Hall, you could be slightly behind the stage or right next to the stage, and that changes everything. So. It makes me think of this biography by Bono I'm reading um, uh, recently. It's called Surrender, and he was talking about something you two does really well is they know that they understand the proper chemistry between the performers and the audience. There's no performance without the audience. There has to be that right level of chemistry and interaction with the audience. And so if you're performing in a venue that literally is like performing in your living room, yeah. imagine what sort of intimate interactions, imagine what fun you would have with in that venue. It's funny you say that, Max, not to sidetrack, but we are talking about the arts. I've seen you two several times, you know, before you were thought of, Max, and uh, he's right. You, they're, they're very good at connecting with the audience. And um, you always felt like it was just... They were, I don't know, it, they definitely were in tune with how to interact with the audience. So, but um, Alan, we should be fair. This, it wasn't just a huge success right out of the gate. There were issues <laughs> mostly to do with the acoustics because we should say it also had a a, a domed glass ceiling, which was cool. Right. It let sunlight in. However, they said, man, <clears throat> it created some echoes that, that right. caused problems through the years. So they had to address that and, uh, you know. They tried well, different techniques throughout the decades. Well, you know, that was part of the problem at the Pyramid when they built it here in Memphis. Oh, good point, uh, yeah. Acoustics are very different. Of That is why you go to some place like Carnegie Hall, and it is designed specifically around the acoustics. Mm-hmm. That was the... Uh, that was. Item number one, right. not item number 10. Right. Uh, because a lot of the Albert Hall was about presentation. Yeah. And the hall itself was designed to be a presentation. Italianate architecture. And you want a little pressure when you're the architect. You're building this for the queen. <laughs> you yeah, know, good let, point. <clears throat> That's true. Let's you're being commissioned by the Queen, so you better yeah. Now because they toyed around with different designs and they ultimately went with the more complicated and nicer looking one. Exactly. Yeah. And here's the other thing to remember. When you look at some place like the Orpheum, Carnegie Hall, the Albert Hall, you look at how ornate it is, you look at the amazing and beautiful of uh, woodwork in it, and the simple fact that 
It's under one of the seats. The foundation stone is still actually in there. Yeah. If you get the right seat, you can look under your seat, and there's the stone. That's neat. So this stone was put in, this masonry was done in 1870, more or less, yeah. right around that era. And yet it is still holding up and holding up well today. Sure. So, and keep in mind, there's no power tools here. This is 1860. Yeah. Yep. This is 1860 when this is being built. This is hand powered tools. But, uh, and an army of craftspeople. No, absolutely. You you did say something though. You used the word ornate. You know what I find? You know, if you really look at the Royal Albert Hall, because I've we posted. Uh, if you want to check it out on our Facebook, we posted a picture of the exterior and the <clears throat> interior. I don't see ornate as much as I see interesting architecture and interesting lines. Right. I feel like there's almost a minimalism to this. Like especially when you go in the hall, it seems like they let the space kind of breathe, and you walk in and it, and just the. The uh, kind of the less is more approach in my in, in my opinion. They could have crammed another ten thousand seats in there, but they didn't. There's a no. certain it creates a an openness and everything. But but I wanted to circle back. The openness also contributed to the bad echoing effect that happened. And so like they tried different things. At one point they tried um, like putting a big canvas sheet um, right. under the dome, which also helped the sunlight because I mean at certain times of the day you'd probably have the sun beating in your face or something, which isn't good. That didn't quite do it. In 1969, they finally came up with what uh, they're call they call them either spaceships or mushrooms. They look like upside down mushrooms. Mm -hmm, they they add a really cool look to the uh, to the Albert Hall, but it helped finally fix the acoustics. Right. And now they have like a state of the art sound system that is just um, it's really you know unbelievable. And you basically, if you're a performer, you go in instead of bringing your own sound equipment, you plug into their sound equipment. And, Correct. Um, so they've got it, and and it's been renovated many times. It's kind of one of those places that's always it's an institution, so they want it to be at its best. So it sounds like at this point, it is just I mean, there's no end in sight. This thing's going to be around for generations. Right. And uh, what and, a cool uh, space. Well, just to be kind of fun with it, to add one little thing during the pandemic. Uh, while they were kind of closed down, yeah, they decided to completely redo the entire ventilation system. So give our little buddy Larry Brown here a little pop out of so they actually changed out right of the entire ventilation system to be cleaner, more efficient, more environmentally friendly, and you know, cleaner. Yeah. The biggest thing is air cleaning, air scrubbing became a part of the Royal Albert Hall. That's a good point because I mean think about that ventilate and we've we've said in the past, you know, that's a that's its own challenge. Well, so. you know, I mean we we love to talk about these great big wonderful buildings is 152 years old and all that. So what does that got to do with your house? It has the exact same problems as your house. Sure. Wear, yep. tear, water of design, of uh, ventilation, and just picture the plumbing. <laughs> I, I mean, this is oh, a huge thing of, I remember about three, probably 40 years ago now, uh, Los Angeles was talking about they needed to spend all these hundreds of millions of dollars upgrading basically the plumbing and sewer systems. Right. Because LA was growing and getting bigger. And as an example, they used sporting events or venues like the Albert Hall, where you have so many people in one tiny little spot for X number of hours. Right. And the amount of water that will be generated in that tiny little spot at that point in time. Especially at intermission. Exactly. <laughs> and... When yep. you begin thinking about, wait a minute, you actually have to plan for this. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, you know, you could flood yourself out. There's only so much water that can go down a drain at any mil at, at any know. one given time. Right. right. Yeah. But it sounds like, I mean, I haven't heard any nightmare stories about that. It no. sounds like they've always just sort of adapted to the times. One thing I found re really interesting, though, I wanted to get your opinion about this, is in 1877, which, yeah, I think it was 1877, which was a full, what, two decades almost before the uh, 1893 World's Fair. 
they introduced electric lighting into they some did. of the, not the whole thing. And there were a lot of people that didn't like it. They said, I'm, I'm wondering if the light bulbs back then were just not adjustable or they were too harsh or something. Because they had gas powered jet lights that uh, right. they used back in the day. But uh, can you imagine that? Because um, I know, you know, we can't even imagine today not having electric lighting, but they said that it turned off a lot of the patrons. They said it was, they they, they said well, it was vul a vulgar addition. I think exactly, it was something like that. Because it wasn't, it, it didn't meet the aesthetic of the time because the bulbs themselves were large, clear glass, mm -hmm. had the burning yellow tungsten in the center of it. They were very, very hot. Yeah. And they they produced they didn't produce light like we think of light today. Yeah. Of they they were a definitely a yellow colored light. So you change the colors of things versus the candle esque appearance right. of light up to this time. Maybe that's what it was because it's still you know it was before they probably could dim them and things like that. Exactly, and maybe it was the wrong wattage. But it's just interesting how you know our perceptions change over the years. But uh, if you ever make it to Great Britain, definitely go to the Royal Albert Hall. Also, just jump on YouTube; it's a great rabbit hole to go oh, down. Yeah, it's Beautiful space, and now you can take like drone tours. You can just watch a a tour of the entire space, and it just yes. looks like a great great institution. So hats off to uh, Queen Victoria and Prince Albert for a. Uh, a great addition to the world. Uh, well, we hope Tool Talk Radio has been a great addition to the world. I don't know. Can't promise anything. But it's coming back uh, here on News Talk 98.9 The Roar. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Tool Talk Radio with Joe and Alan. Uh? News Talk 98.9 The Roar of Memphis. Another like it for us. Oh, I couldn't have said that one any better. <laughs> and welcome back to, uh, it expresses the uh, views perfectly. Mm. And welcome back to uh, Tool Talk Radio, coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. I'm Joe Thorderson with Thor's Hammer, Carpentry and Wood Turning. Here with my buddy Alan Gilbreth from darkoakmedia.com and our pal Max over there behind the glass. There's just enough time to probably uh, shoot us a text message over at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline. 901-683-0989. Ricky, if you're out there, we'd still love you to text in a picture mm -hmm. of the uh, oscillating tool that you, uh, that you that we discussed earlier on the show. You can do it any time of the week. We can always post it uh, next yep. week as well. But um, if you've got any uh, anything you're thankful for, that's sort of our call to action. And it could be sent throughout the week. If you get to it you know, later, that's okay. We want to know what tools or home improvements you're thankful for. And Ricky was thankful for his oscillating multi-purpose tool from a company we won't name the brand because we're right. not being paid by them. Uh, also, <laughs> you can watch the show on the uh, News Talk 98.9 The Roars Facebook page. Uh, the show is up over there. It's also up over on the News Talk 98.9 The Roars X page. And while you're enjoying the uh, social medias, scoot on over to the Tool Talk Radio Facebook page, like our page, and share the page, and uh, check out the posts we've made over there, uh, including our must-have item of the week, which we're going to get to momentarily. But, Alan, we don't want to lose time before we uh, uh, talk about the things that we're up to. Oh, so okay. let's, let's do that. What are you up to this week? Well, let's see. Over at darkoakmedia.com, of the biggest thing going on right now is, well, our new little segment called Let's Plant Something. Okay. Uh, so this we, time of year, huh? You're planting things. Yes. Um, well, as a matter of fact, the saffron is going to be this week's episode. So it is actually blooming. We have saffron blooming. Is saffron what root beer the is? The spice. Like? No, wait, that's not root beer. Okay. No, so, root beer is like, you know, sassafras trees oh, and sassafras. stuff. Oh, sassafras. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So, no, we're sassafras, like the world's most expensive spice. Nice. Yeah, yep. So, they're they're up and blooming and looking beautiful. So, that episode will go up this week. Uh, of course, of uh, it came from the international market is always a big favorite and cooking in a tiny kitchen. Uh, not to mention the fact that all of the Geek Tank Radio and Tool Talk Radio past episodes are available on YouTube. It's interesting to note the seasonal shift over at darkoakmedia.com because uh, a few weeks ago, all we would have been hearing about is all the Halloween activity and yes. all of the uh, spooky, weird stuff mm -hmm. that you that you mm -hmm. get involved with. Now we're shifting to food and planting and all well, the, you know. It's just, you look at the algorithm and you see what people are watching. So all during the month of October, of course, it was all about New Orleans and vampires. And uh, <laughs> as the, the minute we jumped into November, it started being about, 
Well, what did we do? Where did we deal with the strawberries, and uh, how do you cook them, and what did you serve it with? And so we're back to back to food and dirt. Huh. This seems like your type of time time of the year, right? I mean, you go from hot October, which is your wheelhouse. You know, we all love October. Yeah, I think October might Halloween. be my favorite month. Yeah. But then, uh, yeah, this time of year, it's food. It's, it's all about back. the cooking. Right. right. Okay. Darkoakmedia.com. And, of course, if you're a content creator and you have something weird or unusual, Alan will probably put you on the Yeah, on never the know. So, all right. Well, let me just say what I'm up to. I mean, I'm like I said, it's going to be several months before... I go back to talking about the Memphis Comic and Fantasy Convention because, I mean, you know, that's not... We, it's we, kind we of your baby. Next November. Yeah. But uh, back to work, Alan. I'm back to my contracting work. I'm building, uh, you know, if you have anything that you want built for the... Ex, you know, I'm, I'm big into exterior projects, but not exclusively. I love anything to do with, like, uh, I don't know, a uh, room addition or a, uh, um, you know, deck or a screened-in porch or things like that. I, I kind of prefer the newer stuff. I, I think that's why I don't really deal with a lot of asbestos and things we were mm -hmm. talking about earlier because basically if you have something you want to add to the to the outside of your home, that's what I specialize in. So, um, And I will say that typically my quotes are very competitive because I have a very low overhead. I've tried to, uh, you know, adopt that business plan mm -hmm. over my year. I don't have a big fancy office or shop or anything but the workmanship is very well I, i've seen your car yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see what i drive but I, I focus on craftsmanship alan and good old-fashioned uh customer service and craftsmanship that's what i enjoy mm. so if you've got any projects like that that you need done i'd love to uh, talk to you you can call me directly at 901-921-7105 or visit my website thorshomes.com there's actually some surprising things on there mm. you'll find a couple of children's books Books that I've written that you can download for yep. free. You'll find um, things about walking sticks and baseball bats for Cubs players and things. So it's it's worth a visit over there, thorshomes.com. All right, Max. Well, uh, let's get to our must-have item of the week. Um, I just noticed two weeks in a row, well, at least two things. <laughs> I'm holding up something that looks almost like a weapon. But, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it kind of is. It's, it, it could be, I suppose, in the wrong hands, but tell people uh, what I'm holding up, Alan. Well, you're so, basically holding up a micro hand saw. Yeah, and it's, you have the... I'm it's a keyhole, keyhole saw yeah. if we're going to get technical with a changeable blade. Right, so. and the blades you currently have on it is the one for metal. Yeah, it looks, folks, if you're trying to imagine this, it's got like a pistol grip mm -hmm. and the blade is exposed. So this this particular one, it is a hacksaw blade, but you know how on hacksaws, it's a tension type of uh, uh, handle that it's usually held on. The, the, the value with these keyhole saws is the blade sticks out and you right. can reach tricky spaces. This, this is not, I, I even put this on our Facebook, I said this is not a tool you're going to use every day. At least no. I don't. Um, but when you need it, you need it. There's always that weird, I mean, I've had times where I've had to cut a nail or a screw right. out of some area and it'll get to that. Or maybe you're cutting wood or something, but it's definitely, the blades are probably going to be a dispose. It's the kind of thing you're probably going to break blades. You're going right. to, you know, whatever. So keep a, keep a supply of blades, but it's a super handy tool. It's cheap. I mean, that's I also I one of like my favorite PVC tools. Uh, talk that's to me. Well, you know, that, that lovely metal blade is what you're going to use to cut that plastic. And when right. you are up underneath, behind, under, you know, there's a lot of weird places you end up working on plumbing. Of, and that really is a clean, efficient tool for getting a nice, good cut on your PVC. Now, that's a good point. Sometimes we've talked about this, you know, changing a sink, it, mm. depending on the situation, could, could take 10 minutes or it could take four hours depending right. on and this is a type of thing where if you are just going for pure demolition and you just need to, to cut out a water line or something yep. and just chop it out well this will this will get the job done yes it yank will. the new sink out or the, yank the old sink out and do that but uh it's something to keep in your arsenal it is not like i said it's not a daily tool probably but it's it's well worth having and um i guess this is a tool you could let the i don't know if this is one you want your kids using only because it, it can be a little frustrating too the bit the blades can bend and snap oh, yeah. and i suppose they could poke their sister with it or something so I don't yeah know, don't but. let the kids play with that one but it is a great specialty tool yeah it's small sits in the bottom of the box until you need it 
Right. So, well, uh, it's Thanksgiving. Uh, so that's our must have item of the week. So it's uh, let's close out. You know, it's Thanksgiving weekend. We've been talking about tools that we're thankful for and um, home improvements that we're thankful for. I want to I want to give another shout out to one. OK, I am super. This is a home improvement that we did. And I got to be honest, I, I knew I would love the look of this. I wasn't sure a year or two down the road I would still love it, but I do. And my uh, that is. I told you that we uh, replaced the counters at our home with butcher right. block counters and we stained them uh, a really beautiful color and uh, you, you keep them oiled. You do not let them dry out. But man, two year, a year or two in, these things are still looking great. And yep. they're it's amazingly water resistant. You, you get water on these, they just beat up. You right. wipe it off, you're done. But I never, th I, I was concerned that it wouldn't wear as well as it is, so. I mean, uh, a lot is to do with the care. A lot has to do with the wear and tear that you give it. But uh, these days, the counter options are numerous and good. Yeah. Yep. I don't think I would do this if the kids were little anymore. You know, like no. I said, our kids are all older. But uh, it is it is definitely cool looking. We get comments on it. Anybody that comes over comments on how nice it looks. And so that was a surprise because I was like, uh, we'll try it. And if in a few years they're they're trashed or something, we'll just put something else. But no, man, it looks like we're in for the long haul with our good. countertop. Good. So do you, do either of you guys have anything? quickly that you're thankful for uh, well you know as a funny side note of some of my uh work crew saw one of my tiny little nail pullers you you've you've seen oh, it yeah. my little baby yellow with like the little a hook on paw. one end and a yep. little flat on the other and uh, they were watching me you know move sheetrock tap things around all this kind of stuff and there was some serious tool envy oh, going yeah. on and uh, so now I've actually been forced to buy two more of these things oh, really? <laughs> to give everybody their own so that they can, you know, take care of these little tiny small jobs and handle them efficiently. It's funny because none of us are naming. Yeah, I mean, th that's probably another, what, $10 tool or something. It, it is like... $9.95 at any hardware store anywhere on the planet. It is, it's just, it's that weird little tool you see hanging to the side. And until you get in and use one, you don't you don't miss it, but once you've got one, you'll never do without it. And you'll use it for decades. It's not like it's going to wear oh, out. Oh, no. I, I've had mine ugh, 20, 30 years now. Yeah. Pretty awesome. All right, folks. Well, gosh, I don't know where the show went. I say that every week, but it's over. Uh, another episode of Tool Talk Radio is in the can. So on behalf of my buddy, Alan Gilbreth, and our pal Max over there behind the glass, I'm Joe Thorderson. Thanks for listening to Tool Talk Radio, and we'll see you next week.